In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the brakes on a 2013 Nissan Leaf and how to do a complete maintenance on the brake components. That's especially important for those who live in the Rust Belt to avoid having the brake seize in the future and prematurely ruin the investment you made in your new brake job. This may be a 2013, but it's pretty much the same for newer models. I started jacking the car on the body pinch well. You'll see there's a couple of dimples there. Uh, that's where you're supposed to jack the car. And after that, I'll put a jack stand at a solid location for safety. I'm using an impact tool with a 21 mm socket for speed, but you can also use a breaker bar. You're going to need a 14 mm wrench to remove the slide pins and free the caliper. There's one at the top and one at the bottom. Once the slide pins are removed, you can try to remove the caliper. Keep in mind that the pistons are on the opposite side. So if you need to press the pistons, you just have to pull the caliper towards you. Just make sure that the car is uh, stable on a jack stand and uh, doesn't fall on you. I tend to place the caliper on top of the hub to avoid putting tension on the brake line. You can remove the brake pads from the bracket and if they're stuck you can use a screwdriver and a hammer but be careful not to scratch the disc if you want to uh, reuse it. I'm not going to reuse it, I'm going to change it so it doesn't really matter. In my case I left one in because I'm going to remove the full bracket to put it on a vise. I'm using a 19mm socket to remove the two bracket bolts. Now I got loose and you can see an example of very thin brake pads. Some other car models might have a Phillips screw keeping the rotor in place but on the Nissan Leaf it's just the wheel sandwiching the brake rotor on the hub. And as you can see here, the brake pads weren't making good contact with the brake rotor anymore. If you're having a hard time removing the disc from the hub, you might have to hammer it from behind but then you can't really reuse that disc anymore because it's going to be slightly warped. Now, before installing the new rotor, make sure that you use brake parts cleaner to remove the oil, but you can also use a degreaser. For the cleanup part, I put the bracket in my bench vise and I'm starting by removing the old stainless steel clips. As you can see here, since I live in the rust belt, there's a lot of rust in the bracket and to free up the movement of the brake pads, I'm gonna have to remove the rust. So I started with a wire brush, I cheated by using one on the drill but uh, you can use a manual one and then I used the file to restore the finish. Thank you. 
I tried installing the new stainless steel brackets, but they weren't fitting properly, so I had to modify them. It's custom because it depends on your kit. In my case, I had to bend some tabs away and to hammer the bracket on the anvil to reshape it. And as you'll see, it's a bit custom, so you have to try and test and try again. But once it fits, it won't pop out. All right, now let's flip it, do the other side, and it's the same story. You can put a little bit of silicone brake lubricant in the stainless steel clip if you want the brake pads to slide easily. You'll also use it to lubricate the slide pins. And uh, as you see, there are a couple of rubber dust boots. And on one of the two slide pins, there's a rubber uh, thingy that if you don't use silicone, if you use uh, regular grease, it's going to degrade the rubber over time. And you need the rubber boot to repel water. I've lost the rubber thingy on some of the slide pins and it still works. I don't recommend using anti-seize because it contains some grit and it's not designed to be a lubricant. Just make sure that you wipe all the old grease in the bracket by just putting the old pin in and wiping it and putting it in again and wiping it again. Do it as long as the tower is not clean and you're gonna need to reply some brake grease before reinstalling the slide pin permanently. Here, I'm reassembling the bracket and you can use some anti-seize on the 19mm bolts if you want. But uh, as you can see, the uh, brake pads are already there. I think I lost the footage, but I put in the bracket first and then the brake pads should slide in easily. If you see metal pins sticking on the side of your brake pads, that might be the wear indicators. And on my brake pads, I have one on each pads and uh, you can see them. They're just a bit over the stainless steel clip. And for those interested in torque specs, for the caliper bracket, it's 122 foot-pounds for the 19 millimeter bolts. And for the caliper's slide pins, it's 20 foot-pounds for the 14 millimeters.
You can use a specific tool to compress the caliper pistons, but as you can see here, I'm using a C-clamp and I'm pressing the bottom piston a little bit and then the top piston a little bit and then the bottom again because if you only press one, you'll see the other coming out. So you want to press them evenly and you don't need to press them completely in the caliper but you need to uh, leave some space for the new brake pads since they're going to be thicker. I could have used one of the old brake pads to press uh, both piston evenly with the C-clamp. Last thing is to torque the wheel lugs to around 83 foot-pounds. So, now it's two years after I've done this brake job and after two brake maintenances, you can see that the brake contact is still excellent. And although it's showing signs of rust, those brake rotors are going to last for many years to come. As of this video, I'm still not monetized on YouTube, so if you could subscribe that would help a lot. And you can leave a comment and I can try to answer your questions in the comment section. Thanks for watching.